Thank you, Nancy. Welcome to our worship service here at First Presbyterian Church, Salem, Ohio. Grateful to have you with us, and we're grateful to be here for you at this time. While this service is pre-recorded, our session hasn't met, um, but they will meet within the day, and we will um, make decisions on when we may be able to return to an in-person worship service. It's most likely we will continue the suspension of in-person worship service for a little while longer. We want everyone to be safe. We want you to stay healthy. And so far, all of us have. So let us continue that trend of being safe and helping each other. We will stay in touch with you and let you know what session decides. So let us come together in worship at this time. Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. We are gathered, new followers and lifelong disciples, the powerful and the powerless, those who have little and those with much. We have gathered, for we are one in Christ. We have come, seekers and skeptics, sinners and saints, the poor in spirit and the rich in faith. We have come, for we are eager to hear God's word. We are here. We are together in community. Let us glorify the one true God. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray together the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Lord Jesus, you long for us to be one, just as you and the Father are one. But we gravitate towards those who think like us, behave like us, pray like us, because it is easier than looking beyond difference to discover what is good and kind and faithful in those we call other. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to reach across the aisle of indifference, to embrace siblings in faith with whom we hold little in common. Direct us to unity in body, mind, and spirit with you, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and with our community. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We honor the men and women who whom sacrificed their lives to serve on this Memorial Day. While so, we pray for the front line to keep us safe during this lengthy pandemic. Treaties of the 
sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. My native country, the land of the noble free, thy name I love. I love the rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills, my heart with rapture thrills, like that above. Let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees, sweet freedom's song. Let mortal tongues awake, let all that breathe partake, let rocks their silence break, the sound prolong. Our Father's God to Thee, Author of liberty, to Thee we sing. Dear Heavenly Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are your ways our ways. Where we are closed, open us with your word that we might recognize Christ and follow. Amen. The New Testament reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5 verses 6 through 11. Listen for the word of God. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be able to be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, 
will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brad and Nancy and Michael. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. Please listen for God's word and how it speaks to you this day. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Two days ago, my father turned 91. And I called him, and he was, seemed to be in good spirits. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm waiting for my chocolate cake. The week before that, my son turned 35, and he sent me a text. That's the difference in these generations. And his text said, hey, Dad, today I'm 35. Let's go for it. And I text back, I remember when I was 35. I think it was just a few years ago. Anyway, life comes at us fast, unrelenting. And so we say to one another, make every second count. Because time is precious and it's sacred. Yet lives are dictated by schedules. And still, time sneaks up on us. We have 24 hours a day or 1,440 minutes in a day or 86,400 seconds a day to work or to do school or to eat and sleep and give and pray and love and serve and yes, go to church. Yet it never seems like there's enough time to get all the things done we want to do. And along comes a coronavirus pandemic which messes up all of our timing. 
We may think we have more time now, but we're limited or restricted in doing the things that we want to do. I read about a survey that said having enough free time is more important to most Americans than being rich. According to the Pew, that's P-E-W, Pew Social and Demographic Trends, whether the respondents were young, middle-aged, or seniors, everybody wants free time to do the things that they want to do. With demanding schedules and commitments, caring for family and others, do you ever feel like you don't have enough free time for yourself? Our commitments to others is a good thing, but it leaves less time for ourselves, for a spiritual life. Any way that we might look at this, our waking hours, our minutes, and our seconds are very precious moments. We often slice up our life by hour segments, or a few minutes here and then a few minutes there, and our culture embraces the phrase, wait a second, I'll be right there. But we know that that second lasts much longer than a second. If we could control the time that we spend on activities, we might be able to control more of our future. But the downside of having too much time on our hands is getting into those things that perhaps don't have the best outcomes. While we wait and wait for things to take place in our lives, we tend to try out other things, some good, but some not so good. Every hour is important to us, but everyone waits or procrastinates at one time or another in their life. People wait for God to act in their life. Most recently, we've waited at home with our stay-at-home orders. And now we're under the safe at home here in Ohio. So we can venture outside, but nonetheless, we're still six feet apart. And we're still wearing face masks. And we're hoping others will do the same. Next Sunday, we'll have waited 50 days since Easter for Pentecost. What a momentous time in the history of the world these past 50 days. Every time we read about waiting in the Bible, whether it's from Good Friday to Easter or from Easter to Pentecost or 40 years in the wilderness, it's a time of preparation while God instructs his people. In John's Gospel reading today, we hear Jesus at prayer. Prayer is intimate and sacred, and the place of prayer is hallowed ground. Jesus has told his disciples he's leaving. He looks up to heaven and proclaims, the hour has come. This is it. Jesus can't put it off any longer. Jesus must go with what he's done and with those he's had under his guidance. It is a prayerful farewell. It's his goodbye to those whom he has called. He's praying to God for them, but also for the future of all his believers. Life with God transcends our limits and expectations, both time and space. We look to God as responsible for the future it's what makes day-to-day -day living possible. And Jesus says to God, I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. His goodbye prayer is for himself and for the work that he had done for God, but also for the community left behind who will continue his work. Jesus' work was to offer eternal life by making known the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom God had sent. Jesus' prayer represents that 
strong bond, the intimate relation, relationship between the Father and the Son. The prayer links Jesus' death with the remaining and believing community who share the same mutuality and love of the Father and Son relationship. Their mutuality encourages us to share in that very same relationship in communion with God. Jesus understands that this closing hour is the ultimate purpose of his work, which completes his revelation of who God is. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Jesus' glory derives from God. It is necessary for God's glorification to complete the work of Jesus. In Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, we find the glory of God revealed. God's identity made visible through Jesus Christ. Jesus prays that the community knows Jesus is from God. They have kept your word and believed you have sent me. Jesus' prayer reminds us and his disciples that there's a connection between the community's life and God's gift of his son, Jesus Christ. Both present and future disciples are held in prayer. Holy Father, protect them, that they may be one as we are one. The community belongs to God and Jesus. This past Thursday was the ascension of the Lord. And after Jesus has ascended into heaven, in the book of Acts, the believers wait and devote themselves to prayer. The Holy Spirit, the advocate whom we discussed last week, provides the continuity between Jesus' ministry, the disciples' ministry, and ultimately yours and my ministry. The disciples, you and me, are joined together constantly in prayer. Waiting is not passive. They waited by praying and studying scripture together. It is prayer that precedes us doing the tasks given by the Spirit's power. Yes, Jesus prays for us. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They received them and know in truth that I came from you. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Jesus prays for those beyond the Palestine of 2,000 years ago who will come to be his believers. My dictionary defines prayer with these words, an act of communion with God. And in Jesus' prayer, his communion with God includes you and me in a unified and loving relationship. Jesus prays to God and his disciples and for the rest of us to see and to understand this distinctive intimate unity between the Father and the Son and their believers. It's powerful when we pray like Jesus with that confidence, with that certainty, and with that same hope. And that's how Jesus prays for the church community. We can go in prayer to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ, ask and receive and that's bold. Prayer changes lives. In the world's current crisis, how are we doing with our prayers? Do we have the confidence and the trust and the willingness to ask Jesus 
for that which we need. Another definition of prayer is the slightest chance of hope. I believe our prayer lives can take on an awesome, hopeful relationship with God and with Jesus when we pray with the slightest chance of hope. What did Jesus have going into the last week of his life? What chance was there that his disciples would truly follow him and deliver his message to the ends of the earth? What chance was there that his prayer really included you and me and that Jesus wants nothing less than our relationship with God the Father to be just like his? Someone, somewhere, cared for you. They loved you and they prayed for you and they wanted only the best for you. They wanted you to know the love of Christ, the love that Christ had for God the Father to also be in your relationship with God. I pray now that you would hold on to that thought Hold on to that hope, that prayer that was said for you, and hold on to the prayer that Christ has given for each one of us and for our future. Amen.
Thank you, Michael and Nancy. What a blessing to have music in our worship service. Our affirmation of faith today comes from the Scots Confession. If you have a bulletin at home, please join with me as we say together. We confess and acknowledge one God alone, to whom alone we must cleave, whom alone we must serve, whom alone we must worship, and in whom alone we put our trust, who is eternal, infinite, immeasurable, incomprehensible, omnipotent, invisible, one in substance and yet distinct in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, by whom we confess and believe all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, to have been created, to be retained in their being, and to be ruled and guided by his inscrutable providence for such end as his eternal wisdom, goodness, and justice have appointed, and to the manifestation of his own glory. Amen. Now it's time for our offering, and thank you for the offerings that you have sent in to our church office. And um, we invite you to continue to send in tithes and offerings to us as we continue to have expenses uh, for this church. Now let us say our prayers of intercession and supplication, followed by the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Eternal Spirit, from whom we come and to whom we belong, and in whose service is our peace, we pray. Lift us up from cowardice to courage. Save us from self-pity. Recover us from our poor complaints. We are the sons and daughters of soldiers who fought a good fight before they fell asleep and were not afraid. Build into us also stout hearts that we and our generation may stand undaunted by fear, unconquered by adversity, unstained by cowardice. Lift us up, we pray, from vindictiveness to goodwill. If we are harboring grudges, if hatefulness has taken hold of our spirits, save us from such a desecration of this holy hour. Bring empathy back to us and understanding and the fair grace to put ourselves in others' places before we judge them. Lift us up above malice and evil speaking and unkindness of heart. Arouse in us the spirit of Christ who could pray upon the cross for those who put him there. Oh God, help us to be Christians in our hearts because love is there. Lift us up, we pray, from selfishness to service. Remind us of downcast and stricken lives. Let our imaginations run out into our prisons, the houses where the poor lie down in cold and the asylums where disordered minds beat themselves out against their vain imaginings the unprivileged areas of our city's life and of the world where blessings that we take for granted are little known and hunger stalks and fear haunts and tomorrow is full of terror. Wake up within us, we ask you, our forgotten kindliness. And with all this, spirit of the eternal Christ, lift us up from doubt to faith. Lift us out of our cynicism, our skepticism, our unwillingness to believe that the good may be true, 
into a courageous faith and absolute trust in God and his divine purposes. We pray in the spirit of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope it's reassuring to know that Christ has prayed for you, for us, for all of us. Be bold in your prayers to God. Be bold through the Holy Spirit. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.